Good afternoon and welcome. Today we are hosting Business Expresso, your jolt of business acumen. Our hosts have extensive backgrounds in their respective fields of sales and marketing, accounting, risk mitigation, wealth management, and law. Their backgrounds all come together with a common goal to help small business owners thrive. Every week, you can find us here on Zoom at every other week. You can find us here on Zoom at 1 p.m. Mountain Time. We'll be offering you a different topic presented by an expert to help you create, build, and optimize your business. Each presentation should give you one actionable step to walk away with, making you better at running your business and not being run by your business. Make sure to add us to your calendars before I introduce our hosts. A little reminder, we do try to make this an interactive session. If you have any questions, pop them in the Q&A box or chat. Don't keep them to yourself. And we will try to answer your questions live. And we will, of course, open up to questions after our presentation. So without further ado, our hosts today, we are joined by John Gies, business growth strategist from RAS Squared, our expert in scaling your sales and marketing. Christina Gilbertson, owner of Gilbertson Law Office. She uses her business law expertise to help small businesses protect themselves. And Mike Hurdle, our founding member of Tax Time CPAs, his expertise lies in accounting and tax strategy. Finally, our presenter today, Sam Saeed, he is an award-winning financial advisor with Northwestern Mutual. His career has taken him around the world, serving clients in the UK, Dubai, and now here in the United States and Colorado. For Sam, wealth building is all about helping people find strategies to reach their financial goals while reducing the anxiety so many have when it comes to finances. Sam is driven by helping his clients reach their goals so they may live their best life and being a brand new dad of a beautiful baby girl. Sam, take it away. Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, today's topic is common misconceptions of retirement accounts and fringe benefits. And it's interesting that most of this presentation will be on retirement accounts and fringe benefits. When you're looking at common misconceptions, um, it's pretty easy to, to answer. Um, what I found from a lot of my business clients is um, they either think it's too complicated to set up or it's too expensive for them to set up. So we're going to explore some of those and look at the benefits of having some fringe benefits in place. And even though they're costing some uh, money for the, uh, for the business owner, um, the benefits it can provide for um, keeping, um, keeping their employees um, in small writing on the bottom, you'll see that these materials have been prepared by myself for informational purposes only and are not financial, tax or legal advice. Got to keep my attorneys happy. Um, got a smile from Christina. So let's just start off with um, a statement, I guess. From the minute you arrive in the office until the minute you go home at night, your clients count on you to provide value and to act in their best interest. But what about you, your management team, and other members of your company who help make it successful? How can you help them continue to grow and protect what's most important in their lives? And that's why we're talking about fringe benefits today, um, something that a lot of business owners do and something which you'll see a lot of business owners do not um, do. So my mission today, as Colleen said in the beginning, is if you can just take one thing from this, I'll be very happy. Um, I'm hoping there's going to be a few nuggets to take away. So across the board of America, when we're looking at employees, the top five benefits that they um, say that are most meaningful to them is um, company life insurance, healthcare. It's very important in this country as healthcare is getting more and more expensive every year. Having some sort of retirement plan. Um, we heard from, um, from Mike, heard on taxes before that, and then on business coaching before that from John, um, kind of getting this idea of, of, of having a business. And over here, you can see uh, when you're looking at your own business from a bird's eye view, you're looking at an exit strategy at some stage in your life. It may be very far down the road. It could be next week. You're looking at personal financial planning for yourself because as a business owner, you do need to make sure that you've got your own finances in check and you're growing. And then you've got your business planning. 
And that's split usually between the risk management and employee benefits. And that's what we're going to be spending more time on today. Um, you look at top of that, you've got your advisory team. You have your, in this instance, you have your, your Mike, your Christina, and your, your John there. Um, and then on the bottom, you'll have some, fi some financial professional, I hope, um, financial planner, some financial advisor that's um, acting as the, um, the middleman or the middlewoman. Um, making sure that everything is in place for your business. And then around that, you can see there's different areas. So liability coverage, protection from loss of owners and key employees. So that's more risk management we're looking at there. Uh, business valuation on the bottom left, lifetime exit strategies. We're talking about um, succession planning or, or selling the company. Uh, on the bottom right, we're looking at valuing uh, the company and looking at um, other type of strategies. I realize that's the same, apologies in that. And then on the top right, um, we're looking at, I've just realized they're the same there too. All right, well, um, yeah, got a laugh from Colleen. But um, what we're going to be focusing on is benefits, fringe benefits, and determining your, your business objectives. So you are a business owner. In determining your goals and objectives, you need to consider such issues. And, and the main question you should be asking yourself is, who do you want to benefit? Um, is your company in a position, cash flow wise, to offer benefits? What type of benefits do you want to provide? Um, do you want to give your key employees an opportunity to defer some of their, their current income? And we're going to look at key employees on the later slides uh, because you can give benefits as a whole um, to every employee, or you can look at more specialized benefits for your key performers. And then do you want to provide a specific retirement income benefit? So I'm sure at some point you thought about benefits, uh, but you really want to be thinking to yourself, if, are you in a position to give a benefit? And if so, where can you start? And there are so many different types of benefits. And I don't believe any company gives them all. You, you know, you can dissect those and see what looks good for you, what, um, what could be a potential um, good stepping stone to start with that works for you. Um, so on the left-hand side, we can see the personal planning and uh, we're looking at life insurance, disability, long-term care, annuities, mutual funds, estate planning, advisory programs. You're really looking at the business owner there, right? The business owner has a successful business, but they want to make sure that they're also um, managed, having assets managed that are outside of their business. So not all eggs are, you know, um, are in one um, basket, so to speak. And then you've got your health and wellness, health insurance, dental insurance, vision insurance, prescription drugs, uh, voluntary benefits, wellness programs. Most companies um, will have health insurance in place. Um, when you look at group life and disability, this can be an easy start to give a tremendous amount of value for your employees. And it doesn't have to cost that much. Um, group life health, um, accidental health, short-term disability, long-term disability coverages. And then on the right-hand side, looking at retirement plans. And there's different types of retirement plans, and we're not going to go into all of those um, today. I'm more going to focus on a 401k um, safe harbor, safe harbor uh, being that you're contributing um, a certain amount for everyone that's participating in the plan. Um, but we've got SEP IRA for business owners, um, contributions around 57,000 as opposed to six, if it's a traditional or a Roth personal IRA. You've got a simple IRA, profit sharing, money uh, purchase pension, 403B for charities, um, 457. B plans, mainly for governmental um, and uh, a few other um, types of institutions out there. And then you've got your defined benefit plan. So there's a lot of stuff there. There's no way we're going to go through all of that today. Um, but the options are there and there's different types of fringe benefits. A fringe benefit, of course, being an additional benefit you give outside of a W-2 salary for your, um, for your employees. And then we're looking at attracting and retaining employees. Um, so, you know, your business is your livelihood. Uh, it's your legacy and your mark on the world. Um, enrich your benefit package to stay competitive and keep your talent. And you'll see in some later slides 
that the world is changing for the good. Uh, there's more equality. It's taken a lot longer than a lot of us would, would wanted it to be. But finally, there's more equality in the, the workforce. Benefits are becoming a huge um, talking point for employees that want to join the company. Uh, they're asking what benefits they are. If you're looking to get into tech, for example, um, they're offering some of the biggest benefits out there and Facebook and Snapchat and um, Amazon and Google, they're all fighting over to give the best type of fringe benefits for, for their employees. What are you doing if you're a small business trying to get a piece of that share? What type of benefits can you offer so someone can stay loyal to you for 10, 20, 30, I dare say 40 years uh, working um, for your business. So group term and disability insurance can provide a foundation of financial security for employees. Uh, it can boost your employee benefit package. It can make it look um, a lot better to have something there as opposed to nothing. And it can include perks to, to use now, like travel assistance for emergencies while away from home. Um, there is a note on that last comment that, it, that, that, is, that does not work for the state of New York. So if uh, you're tuning in from New York, sadly, you cannot have the perk of travel assistance uh, for emergencies. I guess that's because you're probably stuck in traffic in Manhattan for an hour and a half trying to get to the hospital, but uh, probably better take an ambulance. Um, so qualified 401k uh, benefit overview. I've, I've tried to strip this down a bit to give the main focuses. I understand that if you're a business owner, it doesn't necessarily mean you automatically know how a 401k plan works. You might have been um, a business owner your whole life and you haven't participated in a, in a 401k uh, before. So all employees subject to minimum requirements of age, years and service and hours work must be eligible to participate. Uh, it's pre-tax contributions, which means Uncle Sam wins on the back end uh, when you take your money out. But it is pre-tax going in. Um, and that plan can also allow for after-tax contributions if you do a Roth or a backdoor Roth. 19,500 current employee limit unless the participant is age 50 or older. Uh, loans are allowed. There's 10% income tax penalty if distribution occurs before the age of 59 and a half. Um, there are some um, exemptions. COVID happened. That was one of the exemptions. You could have taken money out and there wouldn't have been that 10% um, penalty. And that distributions include termination of employment, death, disability, financial hardship. Employers take current tax deduction uh, from that. So there's the initial uh, benefit, I guess, from, from there. Uh, there are fees to set up. There's record keeping and enrollment typically paid by the employer. Now, I'm a strong believer of having a 401k uh, benefit plan there. Remember, this is informational only. I'm not giving you any advice here. Um, but just from studies shown, 401k plans for employees is, is really becoming the norm. Um, and you'll see in the later slides that not every company is doing that. In fact, um, about 900,000 um, people in the state of Colorado uh, alone um, are not currently contributing to a company 401k plan. I want to talk, uh, switch gears a little bit and talk about the SecureX tax credit and why businesses should consider a 401k plan in 2021 and, and onwards. Uh, any business that starts a 401k plan moving forward, moving forward from today, um, uh, this year, will receive up to $5,000 a year in tax credits for three years and an additional $500 a year if they also enroll eligible employees. Now, these credits can actually help offset the admin costs of the plan. So it's, um, you know, you can see the state there is given some incentives for um, business owners to set up these plans um, for, for their employees. And on a side note, um, we, we are potentially heading to the biggest crisis of all time, which is going to be a bunch of people retiring with no final salary schemes because those finished for well, the best part of 98% of country um, companies in the, in, in the US. So really, if you're not doing a 401k plan, then people are not actually saving because back in the day, they'll finish and they'll get a guaranteed salary for life. And you can only do that now if you're really setting up your, an annuity for yourself. So um, you can see why they're trying to make incentives for you to, to set up these um, 401k plans. This can help retain top talent as well at every level of your business. And it's attractive to employees because it provides an easy, cost-effective way to plan for retirement by making tax deferred contributions to an investment fund. 
So secure yeah. tax, tax credit. Um, but what we're going to look at since I'm in Colorado and um, some of my listeners will be in Colorado right now is the Colorado Secure Savings Program. Now, some of you might not know this, but um, you can see in the, the, the third one down, uh, second one, because of the, the, the bill that's been established in July 2020, um, Colorado became the latest state to mandate employer-based retirement plans for employees. Um, according to the Colorado Senate Bill 2200, it's estimated that nearly half of U.S. households do not have retirement savings. So I mentioned that um, a few slides earlier, 900,000 workers in Colorado don't have access to retirement plans options at work. The Colorado Secure Savings Program uh, basically mandates that businesses with a, at least five employees um, provide their employees access to an individual retirement account funded through an automatic payment deduction. I'm going to break that down on the next slides, um, but they're saying, and by the way, this is um, due to, to come in false. They said mid-2021. Um, I've been checking. I haven't seen it yet, but it's um, they say it's within the next few months is they're going to implement this. So anyone with at least five employees needs to pay attention on that one. Um, employees can face penalties for not complying with the program, um, $100 per eligible employee per year, uh, up to 5,000 annually. I don't know if that 5,000 annually has anything to do with 5,000 in tax credits. I guess they're trying to say to you, um, sort yourself out and get yourself a 401k plan. Otherwise, we're going to charge you 5,000 rather than give you 5,000. Um, but I don't know that for sure. Um, if you're looking at the Colorado Secure Savings Program versus an employer 401k, um, the employer 401k would generally win, in my opinion, um, but I'm, I follow the stats. So if you're looking at a state mandated program, typically relying on an IRA, which currently allows 6,000 of annual contributions versus the 19,500 on a 401k plan, impacting the overall potential growth of the plan, there's obviously going to be a lot more money on the 401k plan. Um, the 401k uh, plan participants have access to thousands of mutual funds, uh, whereas state mandate programs offer a very limited um, uh, uh, funds on, on the investment choice. And uh, just to give you a like-for-like -like example, um, if you were to have a, um, an example of a 5% growth, um, if you maxed it out on a 401k versus the Colorado Secure Savings Program, um, over a 20-year period, you can see that the 401k would roughly grow to 7,000, 720,000 versus uh, 220. So you're looking at half a million dollars of difference there. When you've got a 401k plan, you can match uh, whatever you choose to match. That the norm is around three three percent safe harbor, um, and then that they can the employee can choose to add a lot more cash. In there up to the 19 and a half thousand. So when we're looking at the example here, we're assuming that they're maxing their 401k contributions, but it definitely gives them a lot more space to grow, makes a happy employee, and a happy employee uh, makes a happy company. And then we're just briefly looking at key employees. Um, most people would well, this this will come afterwards if you're if you've got a, a number of employees you want to be um, helping the the masses via some type of 401k plan um, helping them out um, on a, that safe harbor that I mentioned before but if you've got some extraordinary employees that are um, instrumental to your business there are um, other ways that you can help them predominantly for a non-qualified benefit plan uh, which allows you to offer more attractive supplemental benefits. Um, only to the employees that you select. Um, you can give them like a bonus plan, um, an employee-owned life insurance policy, which is extremely popular for um, the NFL and, and these big leagues. And um, they, they, um, the employee-owned life insurance is a very popular um, uh, product, I guess, or, or bonus plan um, for the coaches. Um, but it can also be for your lead your lead um, employees, an uh, elective deferred compensation plan and a supplemental executive re retirement plan. And go through all these uh, individually on a one-on-one -on -one, um, chat, but there, there are ways that you can reward your key employees. And you know, some businesses, um, I'm sure if, if I'm talking to you right now and you've got a key employee and you're thinking of them and, and you just have a, a hard minute think of what would happen if you lost that person, 
um, you know, it's it can be worthwhile to think of additional types of plans for them. So who benefits? You know, we're talking about different types of benefits uh, schemes here. Who actually benefits? Well, retirement account and fringe benefits have been proven to enhance employee loyalty and retention, uh, exceeding the cost of implementing the benefits. Um, your contributions as an employer are tax deductible. Um, so, you know, you can speak to Mike Hurdle on that one, but there are uh, ways in which you can um, deduct um, the actual benefits that you're giving. And, uh, and then on the flip side, you're giving those benefits, so you've got more happy employees. Uh, employees are seeking benefits. I mentioned this before uh, with the big tech companies. Um, that's increasing. So what can you offer to stay competitive? And I mentioned equality as well, and as that's growing in the workforce, um, studies show that the need for more benefits to increase work-life balance. And lastly, benefits can be inexpensive for the employer, but priceless uh, for the employee. And the first thing I can think of on something like that is a group life policy. If you're doing individual loop, uh, group life policies for um, individual people, so they have their own actual policy, it can work out to be about nine to 10 bucks per employee. Now, I understand if you have 100 employees, that could add up a little bit. But if you have one to four, you know, four to 10 employees, and you're paying 10 bucks per employee for $100,000 of term life insurance, you know, their family's going to appreciate it if, God forbid, they passed away, and it's only costing you 10 bucks. And I always use this, this ex uh, example when I'm talking about um, monetary um, levels like that. It's equivalent of you getting uh, one and a half Starbucks um, a month per, per employee. So it's, it's not expensive when you think about it. Uh, I can't find a place in Colorado to get a burger, including McDonald's these days, for less than 10 bucks. So it's not, it doesn't have to be expensive, but you're giving a lot for, um, for your employees there. Um, I can't believe how fast 30 minutes can go, but I managed to keep it on track. Uh, there was a lot of information there, um, but uh, I'll be open for questions. Awesome. Thanks, Sam. Um, my biggest takeaway is there is a lot of information and a lot of options. So even if you think there is nothing you can really do, there, there's value in speaking to someone like yourself because there are options. Um, and you, you answered my question right there at the end, because I was going to ask and uh, just see if I, I got your takeaway. Um, where would you start life insurance or retirement accounts when you're trying to benefit your employees? Yeah, it, it really depends on the employer and um, they'll definitely um, advise them to sit down with their financial advisor or, or tax advisor and um, anyone that knows their finances in and out to, to really choose which option um, to start. Usually the two can go hand in hand, Colleen, because it's so cheap to get that life insurance plan and it adds that benefit. Most companies, when you have a traditional W-2 for a company of you know, 1,000, 2,000 size, most of the time they'll have one year salary. And, um, and so that's just kind of a norm when you're speaking to someone, oh yeah, I've got some insurance for my company. It's about, I think it's one year salary. Um, but usually along that, they would have a 401k plan. If you're super... Um, Stash, uh, cash strapped or, or you're just looking to save, um, I, I guess you could start with the insurance first because it'd be a cheaper option because there's no setup fees for the 401k and whatnot. Um, but if you can do both, I would recommend both. Awesome. Um, John, any takeaways or questions? Well, for you, it was the same thing. I had one of my clients that think benefits are too expensive for their staff, but that little last piece on life insurance is could be real valuable. The, the question is, if the employee is there, is there a way for them to, in, to invest in that benefit so that should something happen and they left the company, they can take that policy with them? So, yes. Yeah, so there's two types of uh, policy on the life insurance. Well, first of all, on, on of, of course, in the 401k as well, if they're vested, then the, the money that's grown, they, they can take that. Now, that Investing period can depend on the contract. So I've got to be careful when I say that because it could be a one year, three year, it could be a one month. So, but if they are eligible for that money, then when they leave the company, they can take that money with them. That's the 401k. On the insurance side, you can have a, a group policy. Um, and and, that, and it generally, if they leave, that they, they lose the insurance. But there's also another type of policy you can get where it's more individual. 
And with that one, if they leave, they, they can choose to, to take the policy with them. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, I, I can speak from experience. I left a big corporation with a, a disability policy and chose not to continue it and then tried to get it in the open market. Big difference. If you have an yeah. employer that can help you with a disability product, take it. Absolutely. Um, any questions from our participants, throw them in the chat or in the Q&A box. And then Mike or Christina, any questions? Go ahead and throw it out here in our last final minute. I just have a quick question. For, we're talking a lot about this group insurance. How many people do you have to have for it to be a group? Because a lot of my clients are really small folks and I don't know what they would qualify for or if there's, I'm sure there's some sort of a minimum there. There's actually two types. Thanks for asking that, Christina. Yeah, there's, there's, you can have one for one to four employees um, and then there's one for, you know, the rest. So it can be, you can have a very small, um, th there are Northwestern Mutual and other companies out there would, would have policies which you can distinguish between a very small business and a larger business. Um, so regardless if you have one employee or, or hundreds, um, you can qualify for a group policy. Great, thanks. Awesome. Uh, Mike, any thoughts or can I wrap up? I just want to thank Sam. It was fantastic information and really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, awesome. Mike. Well, we want to thank you so much for joining us today. If you found value in this, please invite your friends. We are going to be here every other Tuesday. Um, our next speaker is going to be the Rodney Gallette. He is a fantastic speaker and will be speaking on cybersecurity, something we can all benefit from, even though it scares us. Um, and so be sure to join us in two weeks on May 25th. Thank you so much for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.